The Brutal Emissary is a big, high-cost beater for the guild in Malifaux. It's charged with imprisoning criminals in its cage or casket, but it's more likely to crush them under its massive sword. Prepping the model, I assembled it in parts before priming because this large model has a lot of underhangs and faces that are hard to get to when fully assembled. So I'll do a lot of the painting on the individual parts before fully assembling the model. Starting off, I did the base coat on all of the parts before moving on to detailing. With the prisoner, I went with simple color schemes for the robes and skin. Since the prisoner will go into the cage, I didn't spend a lot of time on cleaning him up. You won't see most of his body, so there's no need to worry about getting the details super clean. For the coffin, as I moved from the base color, I made sure to streak my paints along the wood grain. The orange brown was watered down a bit to keep it streaky, and the flesh highlight was even more watered down to keep it faded. This will do a lot to mimic wood grain on the shallow details. As for the metal, I'll go more into that later when I do the cage. The skull is hit with a solid brown base coat, then I build up khaki on top of it, leaving all the cracks and crevices the original brown. On top of the khaki I layer up some normal white, making sure the white is strongest near the edges of the model. For the horns I use the same brown as a base coat, then do a kind of wet, dry brush to apply an orange brown on all the raised ridges of the horns. After that I use a very light dry brush of a yellow white, focusing more on the tips of the horns than the base of the horns. Now onto the cage, which is the same formula I used on all of the chains as well. With a near black gray as my base, I apply basalt gray on top, leaving the darker gray on the back of the bars and where the layers meet to create a shaded area where the metal overlaps. Then on top of that, I apply a watered down cold gray in a stippled pattern, building it up with some of the dark gray left behind to create a beaten metal facade. Similarly, the faded sky blue is applied in the same way, just a bit more reserved to leave enough of the previous layer. Finally, using a light gray, I highlight the edges of all the surfaces and rivets. When painting metal, it's best to create a greater range of contrast between your paints than something like fabric or skin. The leather was fairly simple and similar to some of the other areas, so I won't go into too much detail. However, I will point out for leather surfaces, you want your highlights to be subtle since it's a fabric, but when working towards creases and folds, these highlights should get stronger to emphasize the stressing of the material. This is a unique quality of leather in real life, so look for examples if you want to try to emulate it yourself. For the coat, I only used a single color, basalt gray, on top of the dark gray that was its base coat. Despite only using one color, this took the longest amount of time because the gray was extremely watered down and it was a slow buildup. It was layered repeatedly and you have to wait for the excess water to evaporate before you apply more layers. This was done because the coat is the largest surface on the entire model and being cloth, I wanted the contrast to be very soft with no hard edges between the colors. There will be more done with the coat later after assembly, but for now we'll move on. The gold on the hilt of the sword requires a balance where you build up from brown to yellow and go back to brown or even orange with a wash. Like with the cold gray metal, you'll want to have a dynamic range of colors to show contrast. Since real gold has a reflective quality, you'll have to kind of eyeball the balance, and since this is not a non-metallic metallic painting tutorial, nor am I attempting to do so, I would advise keeping things simple. For the blade, it's a straight dark gray to light gray transition. As the colors get lighter, I let them get streakier to create some reflective shines, peeking at the hard edges of the blade. It's best to give each face of the blade an independent dark and light side from the other faces, as this gives a metallic sheen visual effect to the whole of the sword. Now that everything's well enough painted, it's time for assembly. In most situations, this would be good enough for me to call this paint job done with a few touch-ups. 
However, when I include my proposed base for this model, which may seem familiar if you watched my previous base making tutorials, you can see a new element is now present for the model. A light source. The red glow coming from the base will light the underside of the brutal emissary, so now I'm going to add that light to the underside of the model. To create the light effect, I use a bright red that I water down to wash the underside of the model. This step is to give a slight warm color on all of the underside to unify the color temperature of these areas since there is a range of warm and cool colors. After applying a couple coats of red, I do the same with a bright orange, but I'm more selective this time. Instead of the entire underside, I apply it on any surface that mostly faces toward the base of the model. Ignoring creases and folds that would block the light, and any angled surface gets a diminishing amount of orange as the surface gets away from the light source. The orange is layered up fairly significantly until I move on to yellow, which in this case is lightly dry brushed on a lot of the edges and surfaces facing the light source, being sure to apply it lightly and precisely to avoid the powdery appearance common to dry brush surfaces. After that, I do another watered down orange in all of the yellow areas in order to bring the yellow down into the orange range to unify the subtle glow I'm looking to achieve. To create a contrast in color temperature, I then apply an extremely watered down deep blue wash in all of the cracks and crevices around the top side of the model. Unlike the red I did for the light source, I don't want this blue to wash the entire surface opposite of the light source because that would indicate a blue light above and seem alien in appearance, where I'm aiming for a heightened reality aesthetic. Inside the ridges of the horn, the sunken eye sockets of the skull, and anywhere the coat folds and creases in towards the body, this wash is applied to darken where shadows would appear. Also, be sure to water down the paint to an extreme degree depending on where you're applying it. The white of the skull will easily take on another color, where the dark coat will need many coats of blue to actually stain it to a darker color. Finally, I glued it onto its base, did a couple of touch-ups, and with that, I think I'm ready to call this model finished. I've done this lighting scheme before on other models, but the results were kind of extreme where the more subtle soft light feels a lot better with this model, and on top of that, it's a fantastic centerpiece that will see regular use in my guild crews. I'm very happy with the results, and I hope you are as well. Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe for future videos.